So far, we have worked with the controller and we have worked with the view. But other than passing the parameters to the controller action methods, we have never truly worked with the model yet. So as I mentioned, while we are discussing the MVC pattern here, the model is what we use to host the data. In other words, the data is loaded into the model and then the model will be combined to the view and then eventually the rendered HTML will be passed back to the controller and then the controller relay that HTML through the response to be rendered onto the browser. So in this video, let's talk about the model. Let's jump back to Visual Studio and let's start by creating a model class. In the previous video, we worked on this editing category. So I want to create a category model class to represent a category. For that, I'll start with creating a folder and I'm going to call that models. This, this is the convention. The controllers go to the controllers folder, the models go into the models folder, and the views go to the views folder. By looking at the web application, you know this is a MVC application, which has a models folder, a views folder, and a controllers folder. So right click on it, add a class. So a model is simply just a C sharp class. We can call it category. And here inside the category class, I want to have three different properties. The category ID, the name, and the description. Here we see the green squeaky lines. This is because this is after .NET 6. I'm using .NET 8. And by default, the application is set to nullable enabled. So therefore, we can initialize the strings to use empty string. Unless sometimes we accept null values for the properties, then we can use a question mark here to just recognize that as developer, I know sometimes the value of the property can be null. But in this case, we can initialize with empty string. Now, after I define the model class here, I can create the view. So let's go to the controllers and let's right click on it and add the view, add an empty view, and let's make sure that the name of the view corresponds to the name of the action. And now the added view is created under the categories folder here. Here we need to populate it with uh, HTML. Uh, so let's go ahead and populate this with HTML. And let's remove the content of the body. We know that we created this model class and we know that eventually this model class will be combined with the HTML template that is defined in the view. So therefore, we can provide a type here by saying model category. So when I do this, I'm basically just saying that the type of the class that will eventually be combined with the HTML template here is of the type category. I can import namespace and then you can see the category class name is color coded. And now I can use this in the HTML template. So for example, I can give it a title here and I'm going to say category and then I provide the category ID. So the way to do that is to use at sign and then say model. So this model is an instance of category, right? So it's instance, it's not a type anymore. So therefore I can access the properties in it. You can see I have a name, right? I have a description and I have category ID here. So all I want in this video is I'm just going to display the title with the ID like this. So now let's go to the controllers here. So when the request is rooted to this particular action method, ID is provided here. Right now, we are just directly displaying the ID on the page. So since we created the view, we can use the view. But we want to combine the model and the view together. So what we're going to do is to create an instance of the model first. So I'm going to say category equals new category. And the ID is ID. And here I'm going to say if it has a value, then I'm going to use ID dot value. Otherwise, I'm just going to initialize it with zero. And then in order to pass this category to the view, Right. Remember that we need to combine the model with the view. So we need to pass this to the view. 
So the way to do it is to use this view method and there are different signatures, right? The second signature has this model parameter. Third one has the view name and the fourth one has both the view name and the model. So in this case, because our action method corresponds to the name of the view, so we don't have to specify the view name, but we can use the second signature to just provide the instance of the model class. And because the type of this object corresponds to the type that is defined in the view, the data can be then passed into here and then pull out from here. Okay, let's give it a try. Looking at the home page, so let's navigate categories page. Now let's click on the beverage link here and go to the category number one. And you can see category number one is display. And let's go to category number two, which is meat. And you can see that number two is displayed right here. So the key things that we learn in this video is that first that we need to create the model class, which is just a regular C sharp class. And secondly, we want to specify the model class type in the view. And then we can just use it to display the members of the class. And the next thing we need to pay attention is we want to pass the model instance into the view method, which in turn pass this data into the view. Eventually, the data will be displayed in the view. So that's everything I want to cover in this video, and I will see you in the next one.